I've got a tip for you today that'll help you instantly boost that shooting percentage both in practice, but also I've got some advanced secrets to help you boost your shooting percentage in games. Literally, this will help you in minutes. Coach Jesse Mitchell with Get Handle, subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified of the newest videos. This tip has everything to do with your focus and where you're going to aim and then taking that next level in game situations. So first of all, let's talk about where you should be aiming. Now I've heard Stephen Curry and other NBA players give their own little variation of this and I'm gonna tell you what I do for myself, but I don't aim for the rim. If you just aim for the rim and you miss the rim, what's gonna happen? Clank, you'll get a brick. You'll hit it off the backboard, get a brick that way. Maybe you'll airball the shot. You don't want to just aim for the rim because if you miss that big target, you miss completely. What you want to do is figure a smaller target on the rim to aim for. And what you should aim for is going to depend on your shot and what's more comfortable for you. So whenever I'm working out with a player and I notice they're starting to miss a lot of shots, I tell them to make this tweak of what they're aiming for and they instantly start making a lot more of their shots. All you're going to do is on the rim, if you see there's like these little hooks where the net hooks up to the rim and I just call them links. And I always tell my player, pick a link. So if you're aiming for that little link in the big rim, right, there's a little link here, you can still have a good chance of making the shot if you miss that link. Now I've heard Stephen Curry say he aims for the three, he calls them hooks, three of the hooks on the front of the rim, and he'll try to get the ball to go right over the top of those right in the middle of them. Me, I go for just that one little tiny target. I figure that narrows it down even more. And you wanna make sure that that one link or those three links are right in the center of where you are. So it's gonna depend on where you are around the rim. Right now, if I'm here, the middle link's gonna be there. If I'm here, the middle link's gonna be there. And you're gonna aim for that link. But me personally, I like to aim for the middle link on the back of the rim. So if I'm here, I would go for the link back there. If I'm on this side, I wouldn't go for this link, I would go for the one in the back right there. The reason I like to go for the link on the back side of the rim is if I miss, unless I'm baseline, if I miss long, I've still got a chance of that basketball bouncing around off the backboard and going in, right? You get that extra bounce. But if you miss short, guess what you get? An air ball. But go with what's more comfortable for you. Typically, more one motion shooters that have a real quick release shot, they're probably gonna find the front of the rim working just fine because they're gonna get the ball over it. Usually you're not gonna miss short too much. Me, I'm a little bit more of a one and a half to two motion shooter, so I bring the ball up here, pause, jump, and shoot more. For me, the back of the rim seems to work well because that makes sure I get the ball over the rim and get enough distance on the shot. So step one is just add this into your practice when you're doing any of your shooting drills, start picking a link. But step two is what's gonna really help you make more shots in game situations because you're gonna have defenders in front of you, right? And that can kind of mess with your focus. Here's a drill that'll help you with that. Click that like button if you dug this first tip. One of the best things you can do to keep your eyes locked in on the rim in game situations and be able to make more shots and pick that tiny link out without losing focus is to get a D-man like this in front of you or a teammate or someone to defend you. But what if that's not an option for you? Is there something else you can do to get something in your line of sight that's just as good or maybe even better? I've got something for you that's real cool that you're gonna love. In game situation, defenders don't just stand there and guard you like this, they're gonna move around a little bit, right? Well, second basketball is a perfect way to get that. Get something in your line of sight and something that's moving so you can really work on not getting distracted by that and focusing on the rim. And all you're gonna do is bounce the basketball up so it gets at least into your line of sight and then go up for your shot. But there's an even more advanced variation of this to help you make your shot quicker. And all you're gonna do for that one is throw the basketball up straight into the air, right into your line of sight. So that way you have to really work on, as soon as you throw that basketball up, getting this other hand on the basketball and getting set for the shot. And you can also play around with which hand's doing the throw up so you can work on getting into your shot quickly from either hand having the basketball. So then in game situations, you're comfortable going both directions and gathering the basketball with either hand dribbling or catching from either side and quickly going into that shot. Leave me a comment. Let me know who you think is better at shooting with a defender in their face, James Harden or Stephen Curry. Another big tip I've got for you for this is 
Work on getting your eyes locked in on the rim sooner when you're practicing from your dribble moves. There was actually a sports science that showed that Steph Curry gets his eyes locked on the rim way sooner than most NBA players, and obviously that's working out okay for him. The reason this is gonna help is if you get your eyes locked in on the rim, that gives you more time to pick out the big target of the rim and then also zero in on that little target of the link. But on top of that, now you can allow your body to get aligned for your shot the way you want it to be and get that all comfortable. Versus if you don't look at the rim to the last second, you think you know exactly where that tiny target is and you're a little bit off, now my feet aren't quite where I want them to be and I have to make that adjustment in the middle of my shot, it's gonna throw everything off. Now this drill and tip really ties in with what it takes to become a good shooter in game situations. There's a lot of different elements you need to be great at shooting in games, right? Well, I've got a workout for you that actually helped me increase my scoring average by eight points per game, and it's free. You can get it by clicking the top link in the description, pop in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. And if you haven't subscribed, and click that bell to be notified of the newest videos when they come out. I'll see you in the next one.